Right, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to test the resistance of this board using the new digital multimeters that we've got. So, all we need to do is we're going to test between these three leads here, just making sure there's no actual shorts in the circuit board, and we're going to use every combination that we can. So between minus 15 and plus 15, between minus 15 and ground, and between ground and plus 15, and that should take care of everything. And to do that, we need the new digital multimeters. That needs to be set to measuring ohms, so it's resistance there, that button there. So press that, and that will sort itself out. And you need two of these leads, and you need two crocodile clips. So, plug in a lead into there, crocodile clip into there, another lead into there, crocodile clip into there. So we're using common, and we're using the volts and ohms connection there. So, all we need to do now is I'll use the crocodile clip, clip that onto minus 15 volts, and also clip it onto plus 15 volts and you can see the resistance is reading there nice high resistance and it's going over range which means it's higher resistance than the unit can take at all which is brilliant just what you want we shall now move that crocodile clip to ground and you can see that resistance is growing and growing so basically that is because there's a capacitor that's charging in the circuit there we're talking mega ohms, that's millions of ohms, yeah, so that is really high, again, exactly what you want. And finally, testing between ground and plus 15 volts, and again, we're talking mega ohms, brilliant, just what you want, so nice, very high resistance. So the next stage to do is to then put the chips into the board. If you've put the chips in already when you're measuring the resistance, you might well get a value such as this in killer ohms rather than mega ohms, but that is still okay. Right, now the next stage we need to do is to actually power the board. Now the three leads that uh, you want to be using are these that we've just been doing the resistance testing. So you've got your minus 15 volts ground and your plus 15 volts. And to do that, we're going to use this box here, which is your power supply. Now this has two separate power supplies. You have channel 1 and you have channel 2. And we're going to use those two in the same way as you put two um, AA batteries together, for example. Now, the only difference is, instead of 1.5 volts, we're going to be putting out 15 volts. Now, this is currently set to the right amount, but to do so, what you do is, is you use the voltage button. You see the blue button there, when it changes blue, that means that you're actually setting the voltage for an individual channel. And you can alter it by using the cursor keys and rotating up and down, like so. For now, we want 15 volts. So that's all good. You've got two channels on. To switch them on and off, you simply press the button. As you can see, they highlight showing that they're actually on. Now for the wiring, you need the four of these kind of cables. So first off, we're going to link the positive for channel one to the negative for channel two. That's just like physically putting the two batteries together. And we're then going to tap out of here that is now going to become your zero volts or your ground. And if we just put cable there, so you find your ground on the board, which in this particular case is the green wire. Connect that up to there. Next, we're going to have minus 15 volts, and your minus 15 volts goes into the negative side of channel 1. We then have crocodile clip as well. And following this cable, we connect that up to negative 15 lead that's coming out of the board. Finally, for your positive 15 volts, it goes into the plus there. Yeah, so that's channel 2. And there. 
That is now the board wired up for powering. To actually switch on the power, you have to press the output button, and now you're actually physically powering the board. So the board is now switched on and working. Now the final bit we need to do is to actually get the measurements and to do that we need to get a signal into the board and then measure what the signal's coming out. Now we're using this generator here to actually get a signal into the board and we'll use this oscilloscope here to actually look at everything that's going on. So we've got the components here that we need, we've got one T piece and then we've got three leads. One is a BNC to BNC the other two are BNC to proper dial clips. The first thing we need to do is use a T piece on your output of the signal generator and one of the sides of the T piece we'll use a BNC lead here and we plug the other end into channel 1 of the oscilloscope and give it a twist. Now we always use channel 1 as the raw, because everybody then knows where we are. So use channel 1 as your input, channel 2 as the output. Channel 1 is the yellow channel there, channel 2 is the green channel there. Now let's just check to see if we actually can get a good signal. We've got frequency currently, we've got 20 Hz. Now what we'd like to do is set that to 1 kilohertz because it gives a nice clean signal. So I press frequency, notice that's gone blue, and using the little knob here and move the cursor across so it's over the two. You can type it in but I just find it easier. So if you're dialing in the frequency you're after. You'll push it all the way up. Oops, we've got one megahertz. And dial it down as well in the same way. There you go, so one kilohertz is what we want. Your amplitude, if I press that button, you can see is 1 volt, which is what we're after as well. That's frequency we're only playing with, so I shall leave it on there. And in exactly the same way as with the power supply, we want to change this. So it's a sine wave, so you just press the sine wave button to make sure you've got the right shape. And you press output to actually switch on the signal. Now if we look at the oscilloscope here, we can see that there's a diagonal line that's coming across. Easiest way there's no point in faffing around and making life hard for yourself, is press the auto set button. You'll hear a couple of clicks from the oscilloscope and then you can see there's a nice signal. So that is your signal that's coming in. Now the next thing we need to do is to actually get that signal to actually physically go to the board. So to do so, we use BNC to crocodile clip lead. One end, we screw into there like that. This black cable here needs to go to ground. Okay, that's the reference point for the lead. And we shall use the left channel to begin with. So your input says L input. And we simply connect the crocodile clip to there. And that is now a signal coming into your board. Let's see what's actually coming out. So we use channel 2. Now you see that there's quite a lot of noise there, that is basically the signal that's coming through from here. If I do that, that's actually my brain waves you're currently looking at in the signal there. And we're going to connect this to the left output. Like so. Now if we power up the board, you can see you've got some vertical lines there. And if we press auto set, You can see now we have a signal coming into the board and we have a signal coming out of the board, which means the board is working nicely. Okay. Now, what we're going to need to do is to wander through a set of frequencies from 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz or kilohertz if you want. And we need to simply measure what the voltage is that's actually coming out or amplitude if you like. So, to do so, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to measure. So, you press the measure button and notice that menu has now changed and we're going to want to use the cursor to actually measure this and notice the menu again has changed. Now it's voltage we want to measure 
But if it's not set to voltage, you press that button there, and you'll see you've got a list of different things you can actually measure. So voltage is at the top, which is good. And source, you want to make sure that source is on channel 2. So you've got channel 1 as your input, channel 2 being your output. Okay, now you should see that navigation here, suddenly there's a light over that. If not, you simply have to press that button in and the light will come up. Now every time you press that light, that button there, can you see that that change between a dotted line and being solid, these two lines swap over. Now what you do is you twist this, you can move that each line up and you want to move it to the top and the bottom Ooh, went a little too far then, it does jump occasionally. I've got a signal there, like so, that'll do. And what we do is we read here, now V1 and V2, those are the voltage reference points for each of these lines where we've moved them there. But what we're interested in is delta voltage, that's a little triangle in V, and it's that value there that we're going to read. So in this particular case, it is 560 millivolts. So that is the value that you will be using. Yep. Right, so you should have noticed these little trimmers here, which are variable resistors. Now, these are used to boost and cut your bass and treble. So we need to turn all of them one direction and then all of them the other direction. I'll show you what we need to do. So we move across to the generator. At the moment we're using a frequency of one kilohertz. Now that is in the middle of all the frequencies we're looking at. So what we want to look at is 20 hertz. So turn this down, 220, there you go. Now, if we move back to the oscilloscope, you can see you've just got two long lines. Now, you can either use auto set, so it'll automatically set everything, or you can use a scale. And what you can do is basically just zoom out of your time, and as you can see, you're getting away from you can see again. Now, moving the pots, what you should see is because we're using a very low frequency, if I move this pot here up and down, like so, you'll see the same thing happen on the oscilloscope. There you go. Now for the first test, you want to turn it clockwise with all of the pots. So that is going to be your bass and treble being cut. The second set of tests you do, turn it the other way, and that's your bass and treble being boosted. So now you've got that here, what we're going to do is measure. So I shall move this down, like so, press the button in, move this one up, like so, and you can see that the change in voltage there is currently now less than it was before, it's 240 millivolts, and just do that for every frequency there is. for these. If you find that this waveform is too small or too large for you to measure, you can do so by using these channels and the vertical scale. So what you'll need to do is to choose the channel you want to adjust. You see at the moment this is shining yellow, so that says that's channel 1. Press that and it goes green, so you know you're now working with channel 2. And all you do is you adjust the scale to suit the waveform and then you can use your cursor and the measurements to measure as accurately as you can.